It would be altogether impossible for me to give adequate expression of my appreciation of Dr. R.C. Buckner as friend, counselor, citizen, philanthropist, leader, preacher, and man. In all these relations, he stands out against the horizon, a man difficult to match. George W. Truitt, First Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas. I think Robert Cook Buckner would see Buckner International today with all of its vast programs and ministries across the globe and be very, very glad. I'm not so sure he would be surprised because he really was a man who believed that God was huge and God was able to do incredible things through people who were listening to him and believed in him. And I think Buckner would be very, very excited about the way that Buckner International today is ministering to so many different kinds of people in so many different kinds of ways. In the winter of 1859, just months before the Civil War would tear the nation apart, a 26-year-old Tennessee pastor would load his family onto a wagon and trek 900 miles to Texas, arriving in the spring of 1860. Stricken with typhoid pneumonia, Robert Cook Buckner and his wife Vienna headed to the dry climate and promised land of Texas. He's called a bandbox preacher by the time he becomes a preacher in Texas because he's so polished, it, not just in his um, attire, but his mind was active and fertile and his attitude towards people was open and embracing. And everyone noticed that he had these natural leadership abilities and they just fell in love with him. So in July of 1860, Robert Cook Buckner gets a letter. And the letter from Paris Church says, we have already elected you to come be our pastor. And would you also be with us for a, a revival service coming up? So he goes to Paris and he, he knows the people there and he loves that church and he becomes their pastor. Nearly 14 years later, in 1873, Buckner moved to Dallas. The village was little more than a trading post, even as late as 1860, with a population of just 678. But by the time Buckner arrived, the population had increased to more than 3,000. From Dallas, Buckner would start a statewide newspaper called The Religious Messenger. It was through the pages of his newspaper that Buckner would become a voice for needy children and the elderly. Well, I have to put this in perspective because the Civil War had ended in 1865. So many of the young men and the fathers of Texas had ridden away to war, and some of them had died in the war. Some of them had died because of wounds that they suffered when they came home. And so he himself, having recovered from typhoid pneumonia, knew how precarious life was, but his heart just broke because of all of the hundreds of children that he saw either with one parent or with no parents. Families 
just scrambling to take in children that had been left orphaned. Brother Deacon, think about this for a moment. What if this was your child and you were gone? What would happen to your child? Think about this. Don't we need to do something? Think about it. R.C. Buckner. In July of 1877, Buckner summoned Baptist deacons from across the state to a meeting. The place would be his old home, First Baptist Church in Paris, Texas. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So it is more glorious to be a benefactor than a beneficiary. He is poor of spirit who is the beneficiary of all and the benefactor of none. Man's true glory consists in ministrations of goodness and benevolence to others. R.C. Buckner. And so, after the preaching services, Buckner goes out and sits under this huge oak tree that's outside of the First Baptist Church of Paris, where everybody was waiting. Huge wagons uh, in the yard, horses all hitched up to the rails or turned out into the little pasture that was fenced nearby. Lots of spreading oak trees there. All the deacons that were in attendance went and sat in a big circle. And so Buckner just pulled a dollar out of his pocket and laid it on his knee and said, just to get this thing started, here's the first dollar. Baylor University theology professor B.H. Carroll would give the second dollar. And when the offering was taken, they had collected $27 to start Buckner Orphan's Home. All of them knew that they were doing something important. All of them were acting out of their conviction that this was the right thing to do. $27 secure. R.C. Buckner returned to Dallas, where he would launch a statewide campaign to raise $2,000, the amount needed to open the orphan's home. He was able to organize. He was a visionary. He was able to see what needed to be done. And he was able to convince people of the right thing to do in the right way at the right time. Money may be separated from religion, but religion can never be separated from money. There is but one kind of pure religion in the world, and that is to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, to keep himself unspotted from the world. Religion is piety and liberality, the heart given to God, the hand to man. What avails the offering of the lips when the light is withheld from the altar? R.C. Buckner. And so from 1877 in July until the charter was written in 1879, Buckner was writing articles, visiting, preaching in the pulpits of Texas Baptist churches all over the state, riding by horseback hundreds and hundreds of miles to meet people, talk to people, on April 9, 1879, the charter was officially filed with John D. Templeton, Secretary of the State of Texas in Austin. Eight months later, on December 2nd, Buckner Orphans Home welcomed its first three orphaned children, John and Alice Cruz from McKinney and John Jones from Ellis County, whose parents had died in a woodchopper's camp on the Trinity River bottom. The people of Texas rallied to the call and cause. They embraced the movement from the Gulf Coast to the Panhandle, from Central Texas to the North, from little towns and hamlets, from villages and blossoming cities. They packed and shipped boxes of dry goods, donated cows, boars, and sows, turkey eggs and lumber. They sent their pennies, stitched quilts, canned jars of vegetables, and raised wheat for Father Buckner's children. 
It affords me much pleasure to be able to help you, even in a small way, in the grand and noble work you are doing. The eggs go by express today, and I hope they will hatch well and prove a blessing to the little ones in your care. W.E. Collins, breeder of South Carolina Rhode Island Reds. I will be pleased to send you a boar pig, probably in about 10 days. The pig will weigh about 150 or 175 pounds gross. It is a good, smooth pig, a little plain in head and ear. I wish it were even better than he is. I will try to get the church here to pay express charges. If they will not, will do so myself. Edward T. Cox, breeder. Please find $2.10 for the orphans. Please accept our little mod. It is but little. I wish I could make it as many thousands, but we haven't much of this world's goods, and my husband is confined to his bed, almost helpless. The poor, helpless orphans appeal to me as nothing does. Mrs. T.A. Cowart, Brighton, Texas. Grateful for anything that would help his orphans, Buckner responded personally to every gift. Dear Mrs. Dunwhittle, the basket of eggs was received in good order and are under a fine, large hen. You have our sincere thanks and best wishes. One of my favorite stories about Father Buckner is related to these postcards that he handed out with his picture on the front and the back that said, if any of you need help, at any time, give this postcard to the nearest railway agent and that agent will help you come to see me and we will help you. One year, Buckner did a series of revivals at a church and then just soon after that, a whole family of children, seven of them, were orphaned. The oldest little daughter's name was Kate. She was about 10 years old and she had six siblings. In the middle of the night, Kate got up. She took that postcard and she went to every other house where her little siblings were. And she gathered up all of her sisters and brothers. And in the early daylight hours, she presented that postcard to the railway agent who helped them get to Dallas. And she walked up to the gate at Dallas and she handed the postcard to the first person she saw and said, is it really true that Father Buckner will help me? Because we need a home. He was also very much concerned about older people. There were no retirement programs in those days. And people who were unable to care for themselves, he was very concerned about how they were going to live. And so he instituted programs for elder care as well, and really pioneers what we know today as retirement villages and different levels of care. Buckner would go on to become one of the founders of the Texas Baptist Sanitarium, what is today known as the Baylor Healthcare System. He started the Dallas Humane Society, and working with leaders in the African American community, he advocated for racial equality in Texas during the era of Reconstruction, when Texans didn't think that way. When Father Buckner died in 1919, he was buried in the cemetery just down the road from Buckner Orphan's home. And it was the only plot of land that he owned. He felt that he needed to give away everything he had if there were people who were in need, that he could not be the follower of Christ that he sensed he needed to be and wanted desperately to be unless he gave everything he had to do so. When he was laid to rest in that little plot of land, there was nothing left behind 
So he gave all that he had, all he was capable of giving. And I think that is probably something that the rest of us need to consider as a model as well. When the time comes for me to close my eyes in death, I think I shall pass on better satisfied under the consciousness of having had something to do in the support, education, and training of orphan children for God's service and in the active, practical walks of life. If any of you shall stand around the grave of your old father Buckner, you must not grieve over any trouble you may have given him. You must not think of his fault and shortcomings, nor of the sacrifices, toils, and hardships he has endured. Only think what a blessed privilege and blessing all these things have been to him, and of the lessons you have learned, and how good God has been to you. R.C. Buckner More than 130 years after those first three orphaned children entered the doors of that tiny cottage, the doors of Buckner are still open wide. And while the organization started by Father Buckner is vastly different, the core, the mission remains. Young or old, Buckner International reaches out a hand of compassion wherever we go. While all the shepherds feed their sheep, it gives me joy the lambs to keep. The feeble and the lame shall find a resting place and treatment kind. The aged ones shall also share most tender, gentle, patient care. R.C. Buckner. <laughs> 